coal miners. Getting home late, no time to waste. Sleep all day, work all night. Coal dust from head to toe. Time goes by slow. Get up at three and work till I'm free. Bible, the pure golden pages, I turn slowly as I read his word. Bible, the spiritual relief I get when I read the verses. Bible, it is my medicine in my time of need. It is what I turn to when I am weary. Bible, it is my basic instructions before leaving earth. We are recording an interview with Jimmy Fields. Have you lived in Harlan County your entire life? Yeah. What's it been like working for the Harlan County School District? I like it. I like it. I, I knew why I was to walk up there every hour because I'm a time gone. I went from every hour to the cave walk and then I'm over out here. I like it out here. But you know, I took work. I took work from saying I'm going to go. I thought, man, Janet, I'm saying I'm going to go. When I graduated, I stopped working for the coach. What made you want to work for the school district? I think. They take the house up and go, get out of the house and go ball games. Uh, yeah, I like it real well. I'm getting on here to you, Bobby. Art of the Eastern Sky. As I touch the brush to the canvas, color explodes off. I move the brush back and forth, covering the canvas. I clean the brush in water. I cover the brush in the next color. The bright white flutters over the blue. The clouds look soft and fluffy. Adding finishing touches, Plus a little sparkle, I clean the brush, I am done. Gold keeps the light on, working from sun up to sundown, down on my knees and cold. We walk by faith, not by sight, so be the light in the night. James Long and today I'm interviewing Lily Daniels. So I understand that you can to preserve foods. Can you tell us a little bit about the process of canning? What do you want me to uh, fix? Like green beans? Yeah, that's fine. Like they did way back? Yeah. Okay. Well, after I got my beans broke, you know, and washed, then I'd put them in the can, and then I'd put my salt in, and then I'd put my water, and uh, then I would uh, tighten the lids real tight, and then I'd have uh, uh, like a tub of water on the fireplace, and uh, I'd have, uh, 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 you know, uh, rags, quilts, or whatever in a tub to wrap the cans, and then I would cook them all day long at a hard boil. I'd keep watering them and keep uh, in the tub, and I'd keep me a good farm and cook them all day long. And a lot of people now, they do it on the stove, but you still do it the old way, don't you? Yeah. Okay, and um, how long have you been canning? Oh, I'm probably, probably about 40 years. Wow. Um, and who taught you to can? My mother. Yeah. Okay. Um, why do you think this tradition is important in, in um, Appalachia? Well, see, that's, that's the way uh, people preserve their food when they uh, 
uh, you know, uh, harvest it, then uh, they would either, you know, either uh, dry or can it. Yeah, because they didn't have, you, you couldn't just go to a grocery store every day if you forgot something. You had to, you had to live off what you grew what in you the summer. Uh, growed. Yeah. Um, so, okay, that's all the questions that they uh, wanted me to ask you, and thank you for uh, letting us do this. Today we're here with Mr. Farley. Hello, everybody. And we're going to be talking about his music. So, uh, Mr. Farley, do you care to tell me a little bit about your music background, like what age you started and what was your first instrument, et cetera? Yes, uh, I'll be glad to tell you that information. Uh, I started playing music when I was in elementary school, probably about uh, 10 years old. I started out playing uh, in, the, in the band in school, but I always had a musical instrument of interest. But uh, the instruments that I play now, guitar, mandolin and stuff. I started playing when I was 13. Uh, my grandfather got me started years ago. He was a, a fiddle player, a violin, whatever you want to call it. And I would accompany him on the guitar. We, I have a band, uh, I'm in a couple of bands, but my main band is a, is a Christian band. They're, they're uh, bluegrass oriented. We play more contemporary bluegrass versus uh, old time bluegrass stuff. And the name of the band is uh, Stevens Family Tradition. We do have CDs that we that we have that we made in, in the past. That uh, we do have a uh, we made several trips to Nashville this year, and uh, to represent that CD, we have promoters and producers and so forth. And we do have a single on the uh, Gospel of Bluegrass charge, I think. So, how does being from Harlan, Kentucky, influence your bluegrass music? It it was uh, that's just a part of our culture here way of life. You see that a lot. The uh, old timers playing uh, bluegrass type instruments, the banjo, the fiddle, the guitar and so forth. Uh, it was a pastime years ago. Sort of like, uh, you know, you have people who have, used to, they would uh, go fishing and so forth. But you also had other people that like to we, we call it backwards picking. And it sort of served the same purpose as going fishing. It kind of eases the mind. And so, you know, back then we didn't have all the technology we have on YouTube and so forth as you can watch to keep yourself entertained. People had to entertain themselves. Uh, a lot of people would build their own instruments and so forth. And so uh, music, uh, for me, uh, growing up in Harlan County and being around, you know, other musicians and stuff during my lifetime, some of my biggest influences and best friends were all musicians. And I guess it kind of rubbed off on me and motivated me to want to do that when I was growing up. I'm retired now. I worked in the school system and my wife did. And uh, it's more of a hobby. Used to, it was, I took it a lot more serious than I do now. But it's, uh, uh, you know, around here there's not very much income in it. Uh, you probably couldn't play for a living here. So uh, I just choose to do it because I like it and enjoy it. It's really a, a really wonderful pastime. Just like I mentioned before, you know, you got some people hunting and some people fishing. Some people like to drive and race cars and so forth. Well, that's my hobby. That's what I enjoy doing. I guess uh, I guess God give me a, a talent, and, uh, and I just have a strong desire and will to do that, whether there's any money or profit in it at all. I just really enjoy it. And you said that your grandfather got you started on music. Was it, he played the fiddle, you said? Yes, he played guitar, banjo, and fiddle. And uh, he, he started out back in uh, probably the 60s. When he was a young boy back probably in the, in the 40s, I guess, maybe 30 or 40, somewhere along from there. And uh, he, he learned from just listening to uh, like the Grand Ole Opry on an old battery operated radio and so forth. Like I said, they, they really didn't have a whole lot to entertain themselves, but they would listen on Saturday night to the Grand Ole Opry. And then when Bill Monroe was out, you know, when he had the uh, record albums, you know, now they have CDs and MP3s and so forth, but back at that time they had these old turntables and so forth, and when, when certain artists would uh, make a new album, he would walk, you know, for miles and miles to, to go get that. And he just learned by listening and, and trying to imitate and emulate what he, what he was hearing, and uh, basically the way I learned too. 
So, uh, the saying is, if you can play one instrument, you can play them all. Is that true, or is it different, or is there some that you can play that are similar, or are they all different in their own way? There are, there are a lot of, they're a lot alike. String instruments are a lot alike in many ways, but then other ways they're totally different and opposite. You know, they each serve a different purpose if you have a band together. Have, uh, generally, you have a, 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 a bass type instrument that uh, plays mainly on the bass clef that, that keeps time, um, and it's played different than, you know, let's say a guitar. Now, get a guitar can be a lead instrument or a, a rhythm instrument too, or an accompany uh, plays the accompaniment, and uh, so depending on which one you want. Even guitar play, you play guitar different, but different styles. You also have a mandolin, which is tuned like a violin, but you pick it with a with a, a plectrum or a pick. And uh, violin, you saw the with a bow. Well, a banjo, you play with three fingers, you know, versus the straight pick, depending on. Well, you know, some people play what they call claw hammer style, which is you know, an open hand. Uh, probably seen Grandpa Jones or some of those guys on Heat Hall years ago. That's way that's what they play. But uh, there's a lot of similarities, but then there's a lot of differences as well. Now, I me mean, personally, I could play some on all the bluegrass type instruments, which are mainly string instruments. But uh, I always get the question, "Well, can you play a piano?" Well, I, I never was much of a fan. I, I don't guess I was really a, a big fan of, of uh, piano. I like to hear somebody can play one well, but I don't play a piano so well. The, uh, you know, the old saying rings true in some ways, but uh, you know, it just depends. I'm not a very good drummer either, and that's a percussion instrument. So I used to play drums in a band, but you know, I've not practiced in a long time, so I wouldn't call myself a drummer anymore. So I don't, I don't think in ways uh, you can say that they're, uh, again, a lot alike. Then there's a lot of differences in them too. I mean, I know guys that can just play guitar; they can't play anything else. So, uh, so I'd have to say no on that because I don't play all instruments. I play four, five, or five. Your band? What? How many uh, shows or performances do you have a year? How many members are in your band? We have six members in our band. We have a, uh, myself. I play guitar, and then. Uh, my best friend Donnie Stevens, he's a, he's a teacher over at uh, Clay County High School. He, uh, he plays the mandolin and sings. His brother plays guitar and sings. His name is Brad Stevens. And then uh, we have my son, he plays the red funny guitar, uh, Trey Farley. We have a guy from Wheatonburg, Kentucky, he plays the upright bass. His name is Jim Hart. And then we have a banjo player, his name is Brandon Harris. He's from Berea. Have six members total. We probably play a couple of a couple of times a month, so whatever that adds up to. And are they all local or any uh, long distance shows? We have had uh, well, we have had offers to play like in uh, North and South Dakota, Michigan, uh, Florida, but mainly we stick pretty close to them around here because all these all these guys are uh, they got careers and so forth. They work. Here in the week mostly, and so we can't uh, get out too much unless it's on summer break or something for school teachers and uh, people who in the school system. So mainly we play uh, and probably from Lexington to Knoxville, around that region, you know. So we play Somerset sometimes. And uh, I think we've got some stuff down in Sevierville next year, Pigeon Forge. Uh, I'm not sure what the, what the name of it is, but we're looking to try to brought her our horizon a little show coming up in December, I think, uh, down in Florida for a whole week, so that'll be pretty nice to go with that. All right, that's all I have for you today, sir. Thank you very much. All right, you're very welcome. My name is Emily Bryant, and I'm speaking with our art teacher here at Harlan County High School. Her name is Sue Lindelman. And I'm just going to ask her a couple questions about where she went to school and her take on art. Okay, um, where did you go to art school? I went to art school in Pennsylvania at Edinburgh University and I majored in art education. Um, 
how did you decide that you wanted to like take up art and how old were you? My parents both were artists and I had taken a lot of art classes in high school and um, I guess my parents directed me into that area and I really enjoyed being around kids. Um, how old were you when you first started to see your own interest in art? Um, probably preschool. Mm -hmm. I just always loved to doodle and color and and uh, you know would watch what my parents did mm -hmm. and wanted to be involved in painting. Um, what would you say your favorite type of art is? Uh, my favorite type of art is is just about everything. Um, I love to explore in impressionism and realism and probably more nature oriented. Uh, what style of artist would you consider yourself? When I look at other people I feel like I'm, I'm a beginner even though I've done it a mm -hmm. long time. I've seen many more experts in the field but I, I certainly appreciate it and some of the students that I have, um, I think, do even better than I do because they um, they really love it just as much as I do. Um, how did you end up an art teacher in Harlan County? I my husband moved us here from North Carolina, and I saw an opening and applied for the position and went for an interview and. Ms. Burkhart was kind enough to give me the opportunity to offer me the position here. Um, do you feel that the children's art in the Appalachian is different from where your roots are? Absolutely. Um, when I left North Carolina, the, the students there had a lot of bright and bold colors because they were from the textile industry area of North Carolina. And here, the Appalachian art is much more folk and neutral colors. They live in the environment, so what they paint is primarily the mountains and trees and the background of where they live. How do you feel that the importance of art affects our youth today? I think um, we're living in a technical world and it's good for the students to learn their creative power and to be able to express themselves because art is the expression of the world around them and I think that it gives them a positive feel of who they are when they're able to produce something on a canvas or on a piece of paper that they themselves have, have done. Um, how do you feel like it affects? How do you feel it affects the development with our children today? I think it helps them to express themselves. Um, there's so many things that can be sad or scary in the current world we're living in, and being able to express who they are and what they feel about who they are in the world around them, it gives them a format to be able to do that, to empower them and give them a positive experience and creativity does that with each other. Okay, um, thank you for your time. When did you start crocheting? It was around March 2017. What made you want to start crocheting? Well, I was in a institution and that's one thing I really had to keep my mind stable and just get me through the hard times. What kind of things do you like to crochet? Uh, my favorite thing to make is blankets but I also make scarves, blankets, hats, and bracelets. Who taught you how to crochet? It was this guy named Donald. He was another person who was in there with me. He was my bunkie. He was a really cool dude. What do you do with the things that you make? Uh, I sell them at the Polk South Festival, Black Bear Festival, Swap Meets, and other festivals. Is there anything else that you'd like to add? No, just that I think that crocheting is a really unique thing, and I feel like a lot of other people enjoy it if they had the opportunity to try it out.
yellow gloves, yellow helmet, black harness. Nurse traveling through body while looking across the twisted wires. Thrill creeping up on you. Adrenal adrenaline rush passing over. Fast as lightning, wind rushing through your hair. Soaring like an eagle, never wanting it to end. Lightning. Dingo horses originate in Ireland, but besides that, not much is known about their history. However, they are named dingo horses for their dapple coat, which is a combination of two colors, commonly tawny brown and white. They were wild horses widely found in mountains of Harlem, Kentucky, but not many are seen today due to many odd disappearances and untimely deaths. Hopefully, the dingo horses will make a big comeback in this small mountainous county. My name is Granny Davis. That's the only name anybody knows me by, except the people that write my paycheck. So, I'm Granny. I got married, I quit school and got married when I was 16 years old. By the time I was 21, I had five kids. Life was rough, but my husband was a, a good provider, and we made it. We moved to Harlan County in 1967. He got a job in the coal mines, and we lived in the coal mining camp, which was awesome. Everybody knows everybody, and everybody was good to each other. You could go off and leave your doors unlocked. Nobody never bothered nothing. All the kids in the coal camp played together. We had a commissary where we could go and, and buy stuff, and we had a church. We could go to church, and, and life in the coal camp was good. I really liked it. By then, my, my oldest child, when we moved to Hardin County, my oldest child was in the first grade. He started school. And the rest of my kids continued to, to go to school at Shields, which was the only school close by. When they got older, my oldest ones finished Shields, and then my youngest and she finished her last year at Everett's Elementary. And then they went on to go to Everett's High School. Then they all rolled up and got married. And then they started having kids. So I ended up with 11 grandkids, which was the joy of my life. I took them to ball games. I took them wherever they needed to go. They spent every weekend at my house. And that was the best time of my life. I, my youngest son was only two, year older, two years older than my oldest grandchild. So he, they just fit right in and they all got along good together and we had a big house and every kid had its own bicycle. We had a trampoline, we had a swimming pool, we had a tree house. And then in the house we had a big playroom where we had video games and all kinds of toys, anything anybody wanted to play with. And then was the good old days. I miss them. Then the grandkids grew up. They all graduated from high school and went on to get married and, and have their own families. Now, I've got 11 great-grandkids. I have four boys that's the love of my life. I get to see them more than I see any of them. I got Jesse, eight. And no, Dustin's eight and Jesse's five. Liam's one and Jackson's two. And they come to see me about every day and it makes my day when they come. We live close together so my other grandchildren, I see them when they come to church on Sunday morning, why I see them. But I live by myself and my husband always told me, you better take care of yourself because I won't always be here. And he's not. He, he passed away 20 years ago. I had to go back to school. I was 55 years old when he died. I had to go back to school and get my GED so I could get a job. I did that. And I got a job at the, I served at Black Mountain Elementary until I got a full-time job. And I worked at Black Mountain Elementary. And then I went to Everett High School to work. And then they built the Harlan County High School and I've been here since the door opened. 
I love my kids. I'm a, a teacher's aide for the special needs kids, and I love my kids. I love to work with my kids, and I also do the concession stand for the football games and the basketball games, and I love it. I love meeting the people and, and just doing the work and just being a part of the school. I've been here since the school blown, and I'll be here till I die because last year, well not last year, but this year, in May, I got real sick and I missed a lot of school and, and I was real sick for a while, but during the summer I, I got better and, and I got to come back to work, which people didn't think I would, but the Lord took them because if it wasn't for the prayers of the people and the good Lord above, I wouldn't be sitting here today because they had done told my family. If you want to see her, you better come because she's gone. But I wasn't. I don't know why God let me live, but maybe someday I will. But I just thank you every day. And I love, I just love being here at the school.